Sunny Dollar. Pat McCracken, Johnny, Universal Adjustment Bureau. Well, greetings, Master. And now, what's that supposed to mean? Oh, just being polite when I see a nice fat commission about to come my way. You know something? You clear this one up for me, and maybe it could involve a sizable commission. Ah, the sound of sweet music wafts to my ears. Who, what, when, where, and why, Pat? Uh, only answer to them, Johnny. All right. What? What and where? Ever hear of the Rochemont necklace? I never. Well, you should have. But come on over to my office. I'll tell you about it. Missing? That's right, missing. From where? I'll tell you about it. Oh, it's a worth. I mean, unless it's pretty valuable, What's there's the no difference. Sense. Your commission may be a sizable one. How much, Pat? Come on over. How much? Well. Okay. The necklace is insured for exactly 321000 What? That's right, 321000 Okay, baby. I'm on my ever-loving way. CBS Radio brings you Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investor. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Universal Adjustment Bureau Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the super salesman matter. As always, the promise of a big commission did sound like sweet music to me. So, expense account item one is a buck and a quarter for a cab to the Office of Universal Adjustment in the Spear Building down on the square where Pat was waiting for me. Oh, come in. Sit down and listen, Johnny. Sure, sure, Pat. Huh? Right ahead. Well, the Rochemont necklace. Part of some old crown jewels or something came over from Paris a few years ago. Uh-huh. The whole collection was worth a couple of million dollars. <sighs> now, various parts of it were sold to various people in various parts of the country, but the ruby and diamond necklace went to Mrs. Liza Rochemont. Now, she's a wealthy widow living out on the edge of town. Mm-hmm. Except when she was away in Florida, California, Europe, wherever, when she put it in a vault at the bank, she kept it in a wall safe at her home, a safe to which she alone has the combination, and nobody's ever broken into it. You're sure of that? I'm sure. There's an automatic device that would show it. Well, did she ever wear that priceless hunk of jewelry? Oh, quite often. Which is why she often had it cleaned and the stones checked in the setting. Go on. So a couple of days ago, she handed it over to that jeweler in the new building just across the square there. Hey, you see the shop? Mm-hmm. Parker? Mm-hmm. Clayton Parker. Oh, uh, seems to me she'd pick one of the big ones, one of the old-time firms, or uh, send it down to New York to Tiffany's or Cartier or someone like that. After all, well, the thing that's is... exactly what her insurance man, Tim Pringle, uh, you know him, Surety Mutual? Oh, sure. Yeah, well, Tim told her this morning when he found out what's happened. What's happened? Clayton Parker called her up in the middle of the night and then barged in on her, looking like he'd seen a ghost or two. He laid the necklace in her lap and promptly fainted away. Parker? Parker. And? And when he came to, with the help of a little brandy, he shakily told her that her necklace, instead of the genuine article worth over 300 Gs, was paste, was a fake. You are kidding. No. She took it over to Wilson Brothers, a regular jeweler. They told her Parker was right, so she fainted. Well, now, look. Well, when she came to, she notified Tim Pringle. He notified me. I called you. That is, after I took time out for a little thinking about it. Yeah? A Universal Adjustment Bureau serves a lot of companies. I know. All over the country. I know. We get reports on every client company's problem. So? Well, something rang a bell. I went through the files. Johnny, this very same kind of thing happened back in 56 out in Chicago. Down in Philadelphia, that was in 59. Uh-huh. And in each case, the jeweler who discovered the switch answered the description of Mr. Clayton W. Parker. Oh, oh, oh. Has anybody been through Parker's shop? Uh, well, now, Johnny, we've got a little problem there. Problem? Like what? Well, if Tim Pringle openly six the police or even a private investigator on Parker. Well, uh, yeah, I see what you mean. Now, if Tim were to pull a boo-boo, make a wrong charge against his own new client. So, what am I supposed to do? Bust into Parker's shop some dark night? Blow his safe, maybe? Well, Johnny, uh, 
He does not have a burglar alarm in that little shop of his, nor on the safe inside. So what? And it is easily accessible from a dark alley out in the back. Oh, of the no, no, no. Oh, wait a minute. Well? Are you... Are you asking me? Are you oh, suggesting Oh, of course I... not. Johnny, I'm not asking a thing. What kind of a company do you think this is? Well, well don't be ridiculous. It. However, if somebody were to find the genuine necklace in Parker safe, someone that is unknown to us. I, uh... What did you say your name is? I didn't. And yours? What's it to you? Okay. Okay. I'd him do a hundred bucks to a man named Fingers J. Mac... But let's leave his last name out of this. I may have use for his delicate touch again sometime. Well, getting into the back of Parker's store that night was a cinch. And once inside, we could see why he didn't bother with much protection. His stock was small, and most of it was novelty stuff. And he must have been a super salesman to get hold of Mrs. Rochemont's valuable necklace. If it was the real one that he took in for cleaning. While fingers worked on the old-fashioned safe, I went over the store with a fine-tooth comb, wearing gloves, of course. Ah, no sign of the necklace anywhere, including the safe. So I helped Fingers out of the back window we'd opened, sent him on his way, made a careful check to be sure the place looked the same as it had before, then proceeded to hoist myself out of the window. <laughs> ah. Now, let's see if I can get this thing closed again. Huh? Oh, oh, now, wait a minute. Don't... Yeah. And this will keep you here. Oh. Help! Please! Get the picture. Timber, needed for thousands upon thousands of new houses, is needlessly destroyed. Watershed supplying vitally needed water for industry and life itself are laid waste. Wildlife is cruelly killed, their habitats ruined for many years to come. Sorely needed outdoor recreational areas are burned black. Homes are leveled to the ground and human lives destroyed. And what causes this terrible destruction, this tragic loss? It can be as tiny a thing as one paper match. Ninety percent of our forest fires are caused by people. People who are careless for just one fatal instance with their cigarettes, matches, campfires. Every American, every one of us, man, woman, or child, is a potential firebug. It takes only a moment's carelessness or thoughtlessness to set fire loose in the forest. Let's all observe the simple common sense rules of forest fire protection. Remember... Only you can prevent forest fires. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. How I managed to get back up on my feet and out of that alley before the police arrived, I'm not quite sure. But I somehow did. I ran a couple of blocks through some other alleys and then playing drunk, which wasn't hard after the common I had, I grabbed a taxi. I fed him three a bucket and a half. I went back to my apartment, had a couple of stiff drinks, a couple of aspirins, and soaked my aching head with a wet towel. And after a good night's rest, I was all set to call Pat McCracken and tell him to go jump into the nearest lake. Until I remembered that officially he'd had nothing to do with all this. And then I did some thinking. If what Pat had told me was true, only two people could possibly have substituted a phony for the Rochemont necklace. The wealthy Mrs. Rochemont herself, of course. Uh, this new small-time jeweler, this Clayton Parker. But it wasn't in the store. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe hidden around his home someplace. Well, I could try. In the meantime, hope he hadn't recognized me in that alley. No doubt he'd be in a shop this morning. And if he was married. Hmm. <laughs> Expense account item four, five dollars for a handful of business cards at the shop for a small printer. Item five, seventy-nine ninety-five for a vacuum cleaner, one of the tank type jobs with all the accessories. And I managed to grab a stack of literature on it. Item six, two and a quarter to pawn shop for a beat up fiber suitcase. The business cards went into my pocket, the vacuum cleaner went into the back seat of my car, which luckily was badly in need of a wash job, but kind of poorly. 
The accessories and literature went into the suitcase, then into the back also. Then I crossed my fingers and took off. you see that sign over the doorbell? No salesman or solicitor. Oh, well, of course. Well. But I came in answer to the coupon you mailed, asking for more information in the uh, free demonstration. Coupon? Oh, yeah. Um, my, uh, my name is, uh, well, here's my card. Now, look. No obligation to buy, you know, none whatsoever. Yeah, ma'am. Look, is this some kind of... James Dakin, sales engineer... And a national vacuum cleaner service. Yes, ma'am. What the sales engineer? <laughs> uh, you really want to know? Uh huh. Well, it's it's just a glorified name for an ordinary salesman. Well, you're a pretty glorified kind of guy to have to be going around pounding doorbells, Jimmy. Well, I'm gonna make a living. Yes, you do all right too. A beautiful, lonesome, long-suffering housewife. See a good-looking guy like you at the door. And Pop off to work somewhere. You probably do all right. Oh, oh now, wait a minute. Uh -huh. uh, you should see some of those lovely, lonely housewives you're talking about. Uh, no makeup, hair still up in curlers, a pair of dirty bedroom slippers chewed up by the family pet. What? Yeah, yeah, and all decked out in a sloppy house coat and an old apron full of soap suds from the breakfast dishes. <laughs> oh, oh, what a picture. Yeah, and maybe even kind of hung over from the night before. Uh, you mean that's what you usually run into? Oh, run away from. Are you cute, Jimmy? And uh, that's why it's such a relief to be met by somebody like you. I mean, uh, well, that is, uh... Well? Hmm? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I mean, well, I, I mean, I brought the cleaner around to give you the demonstration you asked for when you sent in the coupon. Are you kidding, Jimmy? I didn't send in any coupon. Oh, but you must have. Whoa. Would you like me to go get my list out of the car? Uh-uh. -uh. Oh, because if you hadn't sent in a coupon, and I, I wouldn't... I hate to do you out of permission... And I sure don't need to buy another vacuum. Uh, I'm sorry. Good uh, luck. But I wasn't going to sell you one. What? Oh, no. No, no. Uh, they're, they're sold only in the stores. I, I simply get paid for the free home demonstration. Oh? So just let me come in and show you how it works, huh? Then you can fill out the card saying you have had a demonstration and... Listen, Mr. Parker. Yeah, my name's Gloria. Well, look, things... Well, things have been kind of tough, and if I... If I don't fill my quota this week, well, well, look, I'll do the whole house for you, and no obligation, no obligation whatsoever. Well, Mrs. Parker. Oh, look, Jimmy, if my husband should ever know that I... He doesn't like people in here while he's out, but... Well... Oh, come on in. Oh, and after all, if you have to work so hard, maybe you could... His little drink. None. Just to make the demonstration. Sure. Come on in. Oh, not just a minute. I'm a man of high principles. I had a job to do. Which is to say that as soon as I got inside, I unpacked the equipment, hooked it up, and went to work vacuum cleaning the whole house. And I'll tell you this, I should have studied the directions a little more carefully uh, before trying this crazy stunt, or maybe made a few practice swings through my own apartment. Now, modern appliances notwithstanding, I now have a great deal of sympathy for the American housewife. I mean, that living room was huge, and so was the dining room. But I, uh, I didn't want to be obvious by heading into the study first. The study where her husband's desk would be and where, if I were lucky, she wouldn't leave me alone for a 
Shuck. Oh, come on, Jimmy. Isn't that enough? No. Got to finish the job. I promised I'd clean the whole place and I'll do it. Uh, why don't you just sit down and relax and read a book or something? What about that little drink I promised you? We could have it right here in the den. Hey, look, I know. While you're f***ing out the pot on some ice and soda... Yes, yeah, it suits me fine. Suits me, too. See? We have the same taste. Yeah, well, while you're getting it, I'll finish up the study here, then we can sit down and relax a minute before I start... Relax, to... huh? What? Oh, uh, what did you say? Nothing. Hmm? Well, I'll go get the drink. Yeah. Still keeping the vacuum cleaner going, I made a dive for the desk. Top drawer and two on the side had only the usual junk in them. The third one down had a small lock on it. By stepping on the handle, I was able to spring it. And there inside, a small black metal box. Yeah, the Rochemont necklace. And even my untrained eyes told me this was no fake. But I couldn't very well leave it there. And what if Gloria Parker knew about them? What if she expected that my lot job was just an excuse? Oh, right there in the desk nearly scared me years ago. Only oh, no, I quit in mid-ring. Yeah, she must have picked up an extension. And that gave me time to close the drawer again and finish up my cleaning job before she came back into the study. But when she did, instead of a couple of drinks in her hand, she carried one of those interesting little devices made out of blue steel. Okay, baby, that's enough. Huh? That's right. Now, why don't you just put up your hands over your head? of the importance of clarity and brevity as well. That all of these standards are kept in mind by our highly skilled, highly experienced men. The busier you are, the more you'll appreciate the efforts of our CBS News staff. These men offer you a direct link with history day by day. But more than that, they do their job with full regard for your busy schedule. Accuracy, brevity, and clarity in news reports. For news at frequent intervals at the most every day. Now, Act Three of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar and the Super Salesman Matter. Pretty smart, huh? Making like a painter salesman to get in here. Now. Why don't you put that thing down? Oh, no. But you should have been smart. Oh, no, Johnny. That was Clayton, my husband. He thought you might come here. You... Johnny, Mrs. Parker. That's right. Johnny Dollar, the famous dick. You stupid. You think Clay didn't recognize any store last night? Oh? Then why didn't the police pick me up this morning? You Police find out you were checking on him. They might think he had something to do with that phony necklace that... That... That what, Mrs. Parker? Uh, you know, that rich Mrs. Rochemont. asked him. Didn't know his phone. Are you going to prove otherwise? Maybe. Oh, no. got some crazy ideas. Well, I don't think anybody's going to hear them. Because when Clay gets... Ideas. Uh, what? What if I have some proof? Any... Oh, it's a lot. You've got no proof of anything. All right, now listen. Better 
story. Good work, Lori. Poor place. Cubs are leading in the sheep to the slaughter. But why'd you let him in here in the first place? Even if you didn't know who he was. Are you kidding? What do you mean, Dolly? Well, if you could have seen the open arm welcome I got on the strength of batting my nice brown eyes that are a couple of times. Sure. Right? You don't keep very close tabs on her when you're out of the house, do you, Parker? Don't listen to him, Clay. He's lying. He's trying to trick you, make you drop your guard. That's right. Won't work, Dollar. Yeah. Well, okay, I tried. So, now you can call in the police to pick me up. Police? <laughs> don't make me laugh. Why do you think I didn't call them in last night? You're on this case. You sure of that? You trying to tell me they go for breaking and entering my shop? They or that insurance company of yours? In the hopes that maybe you'd find that uh, pretty little necklace? Yeah, yeah, I see. So you admit that you substituted for me. Well... Keep that gun on him, Glory, while I make sure it's still okay. Hey, don't worry. He doesn't have a chance to even keep where to look. Up until you called, I kept him busy. I kept the great John busy pushing a vacuum. No! It isn't here. All right, Dollar. Give me the gun, Glory. Sure. Now frisk him. Yeah, sure. Anybody else in this house? No, Clay. And I only left him alone in this room for yeah, a then. And shoot him down if he makes one move. Worry. He turned the room upside down, looked in and around. And even outside the windows. He made me strip of my shorts and went through every inch of my clothes. Glory, are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Well, then, if... You two to figure out what might have happened. Dollar, you don't leave this room alive. See the necklace? Somewhere inside this vacuum cleaner I didn't sell. Parker is dead. His wife yammered all over the place in the hope of getting off easy. Optimist. So that's that. Expense account total $189.95. Oh, and by all means, don't forget my commitment. Over 320 grand. Yours truly, Sonny Dollar. Thank you.